Hey guys, how you doing? It's Coach Scott, and uh, this is our next unit in Unit 1, which is about lab safety, right? And something you want to remember is that chemistry, it's hard to do chemistry uh, without hitting the lab, right? So chemistry is a laboratory science. So you're going to handle some chemical substances, and you're going to use some special um, equipment, and uh, so many of these substances can pose a health risk if you do things improperly. And everyone who works in a chemistry lab must follow some safety precautions. So we're going to watch this little crash course in lab safety. It's, it's on YouTube. And I'll put the, uh, the video into the channel so y'all can watch later on. So here we go labs also some of the worst like the time that i took a week to prepare a sample for nmr analysis and then a classmate washed out the vials while i was sleeping for the first time in three days because he couldn't find anything else to use for his experiment interestingly that resulted in my personal most significant laboratory injury we all have one i cut my hand while punching a paper towel dispenser in frustration no one ever brought it up again. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to avoid injury in the lab and some good techniques for using laboratory equipment correctly. First two lessons already learned, never wash out a vial you aren't familiar with and don't punch paper towel dispensers. Let's start with some very basic safety stuff, your hair. If your hair is long, it shall always be up in the lab. If it is not, it will catch on fire. I've seen it happen. It could also knock stuff over and include your vision and droop into your flask. Same thing goes for anything that might hang off your body in the lab. Droopy clothing, especially sleeves, are a total disaster. Clothes should cover your body as much as possible. I like to go long sleeve even. Never, ever, 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 ever wear sandals in a lab. Long pants, closed-toed shoes, and socks clothing that covers your entire torso. Always. I'm sure you look hunky in your muscle shirt, and I have nothing against exposed midriffs in principle, but not in the lab. Of course, your eyes are your most vulnerable organ. Always wear eye protection, and no, just glasses do not count. And if you feel like your eyes are starting to tingle or hurt, or even if you don't know how something might have gotten in there, use the eye wash because it never hurts to be careful and you know we've all wondered what it feels like i've actually never done this so this will be a new experience for me ah, ah. it does not feel particularly pleasant but it's better than having your eyes burned out. Do not eat or drink in the lab. Despite our best efforts, stuff does sometimes get where we don't want it to be. And if it gets in your food or you accidentally pick up the wrong cup, that's just a really embarrassing story for your obituary. Also, I would generally suggest avoiding working alone in a lab, especially if you're working with any machinery or hazardous substances. But it will be up to you and your advisors to make that decision when the time comes. You may have seen this little symbol before here. It's the hazardous materials or hazmat diamond, and it's got some useful information in it. Each little box is ready to zero to four. Zero being no big deal, and four being only monkey be careful. Blue is for health, the red is for flammability, and yellow is for chemical reactivity. A four in health means certain kinds of exposure will kill you. A four in fire is both very flammable and gaseous, so impossible to control outside of a closed container. And a four in reactivity means that it is capable of exploding at room temperature. The little area underneath is for any extra information, like if it's radioactive or reacts violently with water or something. If you ever need to know more about a chemical and what it might do to you or to the world, there's the good old MSD. Yes, the material safety data sheet. Every chemical has one, and it'll tell you all the terrible things that it might do to you. If you ever need to find one really fast, you don't need to go to the cabinet anymore. You can just Google MSDS HCL or whatever chemical you think is in the process of killing your friend. There will be information on how best to treat the person who got exposed. Of course, you should have always read the MSDS before you even touch a chemical. Also, you should probably assume that every liquid in a lab that is not water is flammable. This baby here, 
is a fume hood. It sucks all the air in there out so you don't have to breathe whatever's going on in there. It's also why it's impossible to keep chemistry labs at the proper temperature because the AC units and heating units are constantly pumping in controlled air and these are constantly sucking it out. So if you're doing some chemistry that might contain some noxious fumes, that goes on in here. And if you want it to work properly, first you gotta turn it on. That's the vent, that's the blower. Now it is sucking air. Second thing you wanna do is make sure the sash is at the right level. This has a little thing that tells you where the sash is supposed to go. If you go above that on this model, It'll buzz at you. If the sash is higher than that, it's not gonna properly vent all the stuff to the outside and some of it might get into your face and that would be bad. As a side note here, if something happens to you in the lab and if you don't know whether it was serious or minor, you're not sure, just tell your instructor. I once inhaled a bit of nitric oxide, which though initially extremely unpleasant, seems to subside after a while, but it can have longer term effects. Headache, nausea, disorientation, dizziness, pulmonary edema, death. So I'm glad I fessed up so that I could get taken care of. Speaking of, if you want to know what something smells like, do not stick your face in it. Waft, waft it toward your face. Also never test something by tasting it, obviously, and never pipette by mouth. I hear people say that and like, who would? But then I just found out that Heiko, the chemistry consultant for Crash Course, has twice gotten HCL in his mouth by, from pipetting by mouth which I will never forgive you for. That is what these things are for. You put that on the end there and then you go one, and you draw the liquid up with this thing. That's what that's for. Also these days, most pipetting is done by these guys, which are way cooler anyway. Pipetting is one way to move a substance from one container to another and it's a pretty good one. But if you want to pour, you can pour, but let me just give you a tip. Commit. We tend to get all nervous when pouring stuff in the chemistry lab and go all slow with it, but that's terrible. You won't overcome the surface tension and it'll dribble down the side of the container, so just commit at the beginning and at the end. Destroy that surface tension. Okay, back to safety. The most common lab injuries are cuts and punctures, and the most common source of those is cleaning up broken glass, which you should not do with your hands, but with a broom and a dustpan, and then deposit the results into a bin specifically for sharp stuff. But the worst thing, and it has happened so many times and it is so terrible, is forcing a glass rod or a thermometer or a piece of tubing through a stopper, and then it breaks, and then right into and through Ooh. your hand, and it's you're in the hospital, and you've been pain for the rest of your life, probably. So when you're doing this, and it is sometimes necessary, you can use a bit of water or a lubricant or some kind of Vaseline to make it easier to go through, and then you hold it close and make sure your hand is not on the other side. So very close and make it go through like that. Not like this, because that's, no. When you're done with an experiment, do not just dump the results into the sink unless this has been explicitly approved by the person in charge of chemical safety. For some chemicals, like common acids or bases, dilution is the solution to pollution. When they get diluted, all that's left is common ions like chloride ions from HCl or sodium ions from sodium hydroxide, in addition to some protons or hydroxide ions that are neutralized by buffer ions that are present in your sewage system anyway. Bottom line is, they can be flushed with lots of water. For other chemicals, flushing is not a good idea. I probably won't hurt you, but it might hurt the environment. Do put the products into an appropriate waste container, but not just any waste container. Different solvents and reagents have to be disposed of differently. And if you dump some stuff into the wrong container, it could totally end up reacting with the other things that have been dumped in there. Not good. Rule of thumb, always know the right way to dispose of something before you even start to use it. This is an apron. It protects you and your clothes just a bit extra in case you're working with something hazardous like concentrated acids. Aprons are nice because they're easy to get off if you spill something on them. Well, if you're wearing pants, you might hesitate a bit too long before you ditch them. Which reminds me, if you spill more than just a bit of anything super bad on your pants, Modesty goes out the window. Just take them off. Also, while you're taking them off, you might want to run over to this guy here. His job is to dump a gigantic amount of water on you really fast. Now, usually, you don't get to see these things in action unless there's an actual emergency, but to thank you for sticking with us through this somewhat disjointed lecture on safety in the lab, I'm gonna take this off. That's a lot of water! Oh. Thank you for watching this episode of Crash Course Chemistry. If you were listening, you... So that's a real good video on lab safety, and uh, hopefully we learned something from there. So let's just summarize that video. So we got to wear our goggles whenever we're in the lab, okay? And I'll show you where those are, but when you're in doing lab stuff, 
wear goggles. Closed toe shoes also, they must be worn at all times in the lab. Aprons and gloves, gloves may be necessary in the lab. I doubt that we're going to be doing too much stuff to where you have to wear an apron, but I'll tell you if you do, okay? And if you got long hair like me, you've got to tie it back. The no loose clothing of our jewelry. Um, if you got the long necklace and we've got stuff going on, it might melt that necklace and then it will be on your skin and it will feel very hot. So let's do a check for understanding here. Goggles must be worn when? When handling dangerous chemicals, when using Bunsen burger, burners, burgers at all times in the lab no exceptions or when the teacher reminds students let's pause of course the answer is at all times in the lab no exceptions so some other safety rules no food drink or gum in the lab just like the video said so you all won't be drinking these when we're doing lab Read all your lab procedures and follow the instructions given by me before you even begin a lab. Before we do a lab, you'll have a pre-lab video the night beforehand and worksheets to get you ready. All right. If a spill occurs any time in my class, let me know. Especially with chemicals. We're, we're, I'm trained to clean them up safely. Uh, if glassware or other equipment breaks, I'm not going to, as long as you weren't sword fighting with my expensive burettes, tell me immediately. I will pick that up for you. And don't use your hands to pick up the chipped or cracked glassware. Follow the chemical disposal instructions and do not mix chemicals unless I tell you to do so by the teacher, by me. Don't just mix some stuff together and say, hey, it's cool. And then wash hands thoroughly with soap and warm water after each lap. Let's do a check for understanding. A student is measuring liquid in a graduated cylinder is instructed and cuts themselves. The injury is most likely caused by what? Not following procedure? Using cracked glassware? Random chance? A dangerous chemical corroding the glass? Let's pause. Of course, the answer to that is B, using cracked glassware. Cleaning up a chemical spill yourself rather than notify the teacher can result in what? Extra credit, possible chemical burns, contamination of clothing, or both B and C. Pause. And of course, the, well, of course the answer is both B and C. You can burn yourself or you can contaminate your clothing. What is the last thing you should do at the end of each lab? Clean up all of the materials? Yeah, what's the last thing though? Turn in your lab questions or wash your hands thoroughly with some warm soap and water. Of course, the answer to that is C, wash your hands thoroughly. So, some more chemical lab safety. Read and understand the directions and the procedures before you begin each lab. Review the chemical safety guidelines before you handle the chemicals. And you can find these on the SDSs, right? The chemical bottles and then the lab procedure. Before you handle a chemical, I'm going to let you know about it, okay? Keep your lab area neat and organized. Clean up and wash all your materials at the end of each lab before you wash your hands. Avoid contamination, all right? Unused chemicals should not be returned to the jar. I will have enough for you laid out so we don't waste material. And you never want to put, you don't want to ever put things into a reagent bottle. Don't put a pipette, a spatula, or dropper, etc., because that can contaminate the material. When you heat a liquid, turn the container away from you and others. And you want to use tongs to handle hot glassware, or you will burn yourself. When you heat a flammable liquid, use a hot plate instead of a burner, instead of an open flame. Makes sense, right? When you dilute acids, pour the acids slowly into the water. All right? And then you want to stir them to get rid of any of the generated heat. 
you never want to pour water into a concentrated acid. They used to say, do what you ought to pour acid into water. That's true. And again, to properly smell a chemical or smell an odor from a chemical, you want to waft it. And that's what I mean by waft it. Take your hands and push it toward your nose. And you want to use your hands to wave them. Don't inhale deeply. Just get the, the odor into your nose. All right. Don't put your nose right against the bottle. So a student uses a spatula to remove a chemical from a reagent bottle, then uses the same spatula to turn a small amount of spilled chemical back into the bottle. Is this correct protocol? No. Chemicals should never be returned to the reagent bottles once removed because they could be contaminated. Or yes, the spatula only touched one type of chemical, so there is little risk of contamination. Well, the answer is no, you should not because that stuff is contaminated. When you dilute acids, always add what? A little bit of water directly to the acid? A small amount of acid to a large quantity of water? A base to neutralize the acid or ice to cool the reaction? Of course, the answer to that is do what you ought to add acid into the water. So, we're going to do this in class. I want you to identify where all these are. We'll also probably do a pogel, which does that. Now, the eyewash station, I will show you this in person so you know where it's at. And you use that if you get anything into your eye. You do it quickly. How do we do it? Turn the water on. Keep your eyelid open. Flush it for at least 15 minutes. And then you want to rotate your eyeball around. you got to get that stuff out of your eye. You don't want to go blind. The safety shower, we use that if your skin's exposed to hazardous chemicals or clothing. All right, how do we do that? We stand under the shower and we engage the water. We're going to flush that chemical off for at least 15 minutes and then take contaminated clothing off if necessary. Now, wow, what if we say fire, fire, fire? We have a fire extinguisher. The fire extinguisher is you can be used if the fire breaks out in the lab. The first thing you're going to do is notify me if the fire breaks out. Now, the fire extinguisher will not put out all types of chemical fires. If a person catches on fire, don't use the fire extinguisher. Use the fire blanket, which I will show you where that's at. To use the fire extinguisher, hold the thing upright, pull the pin, the safety pin, and then step back away, and then you want to aim at the base of the fire. Squeeze the handle together, and then sweep the stream from side to side. Okay. Now, again, use the fire blanket to smother fires. If you catch on fire, stop drop and roll all right if someone sees you on fire they grab the fire blanket and then they cover you up in it all right what do we do remove the blanket from the holder it's on a shelf i will show you wrap it around the victim and put out the fire check for understanding if your lab partner forgets to tie back her hair or his hair and it catches on fire during the lab you should immediately what Notify the teacher and grab the fire blanket or grab the fire extinguisher or walk her to the safety shower or throw water on her. Pause. And we come back and of course the answer to that is notify me and grab the fire blanket. If you accidentally touch hot glassware, don't cuss. Do we run to the safety shower? Pour a chemical on your skin to dull the pain. Continue working or immediately rinse your hands under cold water and notify me. Pause. Of course, the answer to that is D. Immediately put your hands in cold water and notify me. Now, if a large amount of chemical spills on your clothing, a large amount, what do we do? Run to the safety shower, pour a chemical on your clothes to neutralize the spilled chemical. Do you continue working or do you dab at the chemical with a wet paper towel? Pause. 
The answer, of course, is run to the safety shower. If a chemical splashes into your eye, do you run to the safety shower? Rub your eyes gently and notify the teacher. Or do we immediately run to the eye wash station and begin flushing your eye for 15 minutes? Or do we dab at the chemical with a wet paper towel? Pause. Of course, we're going to immediately run to the eye wash station and we're going to flush your eye for 15 minutes. So, in order to be safe in lab, follow all your safety procedures, all your safety rules, and you'll have a healthy and productive lab experience. So, I'm not going to show this video. It's about 30 minutes. It's sort of corny and it's old, but I will put it into the uh, teens file so you can watch it at your leisure. So anyway, guys, this is Coach Scott. You'll be doing a guided activity on lab safety. This is testable. And uh, so you guys have a wonderful day. So Coach Scott saying bye-bye for now.